It's good to see you. It's lovely to see you. With your clothes on, I was hoping you might do the interview with just a blue jacket on and nothing else. Oh, that, that would... That, I don't know at this hour <laughs> that people are watching this show. I don't think anybody really wants that Needs at this time. Or any, or any hour of the day, let's be honest. Well, aside from not being in your Peter Rabbit go, I love this. Oh, thanks. Absolutely loved it, mate. Came yes. out with a smile on my face, broader than the Cheshire Cat. It's absolutely spectacular. And the fur, it's like it's real. Yeah, the, the animation studio, are, are, I think they're, they're in Australia, and they're, they're some of the best uh, animators in the world. They're certainly regarded as such, and I think what they've done with the animals is, is really quite amazing, yeah. So you grew up with it like all of us, right? I did, yeah. I grew up, I grew up with the, the stories. I've, I've read them to my children, and... And I'm, I'm very much aware of how much they mean to people, how much that character and just the, the entire world of Beatrix Potter, what it means to people. And, and so I sort of felt slightly reticent about it when I, it came my way. I sort of thought, I, I don't know if, if I could do this. And then when I, I got told that it's the first time the Beatrix Potter estate has ever given permission for a film to be made because they felt that the character was was honored in the way that uh, that she had written the book and also they, they loved that Will Gluck who wrote the film and directed it had taken many loads of different vignettes from lots of different stories yeah. and placed them in this one and so um, you know as soon as I heard that it was like oh great yeah let's let's go for it let's do it and it's it's I'm very very pleased that I did, because I'm really proud of it. Oh, it's terrific. When you say reticent, I mean, obviously it's a big responsibility when you're voicing a character that we've all grown up with. Mm. Um, finding the voice for the character, I mean, is it literally a case of practising in front of the mirror? I mean, we've all done it, but... Not really in front of the mirror, just practising with Will, really. So I think, I, I don't know if this is true, but I don't think anything from, like, our first two sessions sort of made the final edit of the film, because I think I just... He sort of talks in a slightly higher... He's sort of slightly there, you know, and that didn't happen in, in the start. And then it was just one day I did that, and Will just went, "That, that's it. That's what he should sound like." Which um, so as soon as we locked into that, it was great. But there's, there's not much practicing because you've got endless opportunities to get it wrong, you know. Yeah, it's, mm. it's the little boy in all of us, though. I think that's why Peter was such a big character, don't you think? Well, I think I, from what I remember, I don't specifically remember whether it was my mother or my father that, that read me those stories but what I do remember it was the first time I'd been read a story with a character who was naughty most stories I'd read at that point were just stories of Jack and Jill or the famous um, five you know things like that whereas he was a he was a guy who was mischievous and he was naughty and he was told not to do something and then would go and do it anyway and I'd never really heard that and then what's wonderful about the film is and in the books is every time he is naughty, and I think it never really works out well for him, you know? You must be doing it for the brood. You're ever-expanding brood. Congratulations, yeah, by you. the way. Cheers. Um, number three? Number three, but yeah. They, I, mean, like, I mean, Max, the eldest, right? Yes. So he's got to be of an age where he's seen you in, in, in stuff, and, 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 and he must be thrilled to hear your voice attached to something like this. I think so. I wish he thought it was a bit cooler. <laughs> in he, what you sense? Know, I wish he just... I, wish, I thought he would just think it's amazing, but he's like... All right, yeah, cool. You know what I mean? It's sort of a bit like that, but uh, I think he likes it. Yeah, he certainly loves the film. I don't even know that my daughter, who's three, I think she knows it sounds like me and she knows it's me, but when she's watching the film, I don't think she ever really puts the, the two together, you know? Your life, um, you describe it um, recently, I read, uh, it's like a bomb, has, the fame that you, you've achieved at the moment. And we've known each other for a long time mm. and, and met, I mean, I think one of the first times we ever met was on the set of the Paul Potts film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of yeah. course, many times time. backstage at the yeah. Brits, we've known each other a long time. But you describe it as it, like, almost like a bomb going off on your life, and because it, it must be absolutely unrecognisable. Or, or is it? Um, in many respects, it's, very, it's exactly the same. Like, so... The strangest thing for us is, as a family, is you know living in Los Angeles now is is a. It's, I never, I never thought that that would be our life that we would live there. You know, we we, and and nor did my wife. We had just sort of moved into a new house when we decided to move, and and uh, it's all very very strange. It's all it's all very different. Just the very nature of the job that I'm doing is different now, and so I, I've. But, but at no point have I ever found it anything other than completely sort of comfortable and natural, really. I, I, 
it's not lost on me what a privilege it is to go to to go to a country like America and be accepted in the manner that that our show has been accepted. It's it's I, I know that that's not the norm. That, that normally, um, you know, history is littered with people that go to America and then and then at some point you sort of come home and go off for one reason or another that didn't really work and that isn't because of ability or talent and I don't think it's my my ability or talent that has made it work I just think we just sort of we were ready when the luck came you yeah. know well you were prepared and that's, that's I mean, you all it's, stripes, I think. that's all it sort of comes down to really is is that you know in those moments those flashes of luck or kismet or whatever you want to call it uh, uh, does it all fall into place and that's Certainly how it's felt for us over the last couple of years, you know, my wife and I, yeah. And raising the family over there as well, because I was thinking about this in the car on the way over. Their upbringing, the environment, if you like, aside from obviously, you know, your care and love and attention and stuff, is so divorced from what you grew up with in that sense. Yeah, isn't it? Oh, very much so, yeah, in every, in every way, you know. Um, but, uh, but you're, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't really know. I didn't know if we were rich or poor or anything like. I, 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 you're not aware of that as you're a kid. I, I didn't yeah. know your circumstances are the the world that you're brought into, and it's the people around you that will shape you. So, you know, that's what we try and do with our kids. Is actually, yes, the the sky might look different most of the year, and. The surroundings of the journey to school and what you and, and the, the surroundings of the house that we live in might be different, but actually, the trick is to try and keep it the same. And I'm very lucky, and my wife is very lucky also to grow up in a house with two parents who are still together. Who, um, you know, my, my mum and dad just kind of showered me with, with love, really. They were just, I could go to school and I could be bullied, I could be in favour, out of favour, fall out with someone. Not for, and I would know that if I went back home, as soon as I got in that door, there would be this sort of cushion of love, a sort of bubble wrap of love. So, in many respects, although from an exterior point of view, my son, my children's lives are different. At its core, I would hope that it's the same. You know? Yeah, of course it is. Are you aware when you come back, um, James, of the tremendous pride that there is, uh, least of all from your own sort of family and friends and stuff, but a sort of national pride that our boys out there and done so good. Sometimes that's. I mean, any time I have felt that, I, I really, it, it, I find it very humbling. You know, I, I love it. It's, it's great, and I do. Whenever we're here, whenever we talk about coming back, we, we always talk in our house of coming home. And and um, and I miss it hugely. Some days, some days, some weeks, and some months are fine, and they fly by. And yeah. I think anybody who's watching this, who lives a long way from their families, w would understand that some days it's just life, and you're getting on with it. And then there'll just be little moments, something will happen, and you you feel unbelievably homesick. And and um, but I, I feel how if people do feel that sense of pride, and if they do, that's really lovely. It's it's nothing close to the sense of pride that I feel to come from a, this little island where they've created so much incredible art and culture and, uh, and, and so many great people and things, you know. Oh, stop it, you're flattering me. No, I'm Of course, serious. the thing you miss most is waking up with me, James, right? Well, that's, well, I, in a way, I still feel like I do, but we shouldn't talk about that on the air. <laughs> Least of all in the blue jacket with no clothes on. Right, quick fire quiz before okay. I let you go. Rabbits or guinea pigs? Rabbits. Always. Piers or Susanna? Susanna. <laughs> the US or the UK? The UK. Thank you. Harry Styles or Liam Payne? Harry Styles. Interviewing or being interviewed? Being interviewed. It's much less pressure. Thank you. The Brits or the Grammys? Ooh. Now, from what point of view is this? As oh. a host? As a host? As a host. The Grammys. OK, brilliant. Uh, Essex or Barry Island, lovely boy? Barry Island. Barry Island every yeah. time. It's an absolute joy to see oh, you again. So Congratulations nice to see on you. everything. We've what got a little a gift for you. No, you don't. Talk about your ever-expanding brood. Oh, my word. We've got no Peter way. Rabbit. Dress up as a hammer. I believe oh, it's a hammer. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, you're it completely is. right. You know what I'm like. I'm not a cross well, I mean, the irony is he could probably make our team right now. <laughs> like, he would certainly be a better option than some of the players who played last Saturday against Swansea. So, you know... If, he, if we send him now to the London Stadium, he'll probably get in the side. He'll That's, make the cut. But he still wouldn't play for Arsenal. 